Good morning. I am Dr. Nagashree from the Department of Chemistry of BMS College of Engineering. Today, you are going to see now an experiment to determine the amount of acids present in a given mixture conductometrically. So, the title of the experiment is Conductometric Estimation of Strong and Weak Acid in a Given Mixture. To begin with, we need to know what you mean by conductance. We all know conductance is nothing but the reciprocal of the resistance and is measured in siemens. We are going to measure conductivity or which is nothing but specific conductance of a solution using a conductivity cell. A conductivity cell consists of two platinum electrodes having fixed area and which are separated by a fixed distance. And when you measure the conductivity of a solution, it will be nothing but the conductivity due to all the ions present between these two electrodes of unit area of cross section and unit distance apart. And that is known as specific conductance and it is measured in Siemens per centimeter. When it comes to the experiment in which you are supposed to find out the amount of given strong and weak acid present in a mixture, uh, Firstly, we will be providing you with a mixture which contains certain amount of HCl and acetic acid mixed in each other. So, when you are going to do the conductance measurements by adding certain amounts of base each time and find out the amount of each acid present in the given mixture. When HCl is treated with sodium hydroxide, it is the nucleization reaction of HCl that occurs when the highly mobile H plus ions are replaced by the less mobile sodium ions in the system. So, okay, to begin with, you will start to see a decrease in the specific conductance as it when to add sodium hydroxide into the acid mixture. This continues till all the HCl has been neutralized and the dissociation of the acetic acid begins and the neutralization of the acetic acid occurs on further addition of sodium hydroxide. When the neutralization reaction between acetic acid and sodium hydroxide occurs, we get the formation of sodium acetate as the salt. Since the dissociation of sodium acetate is lesser, since the dissociation of sodium acetate is better compared to the acetic acid, upon Continuation of the addition of sodium hydroxide and formation of more and more amount of sodium acetate, we will get to see the increase in specific conductance of the solution. And once again, this continues till all the acetic acid in your solution has been neutralized completely. And once the acid has been neutralized completely, whatever sodium hydroxide we add will be in excess and it is unused. And leads to the presence of lot of hydroxy ions in the system which will have certain specific conductance associated with that and we will get to see an increase in the specific conductance of the solution steeply. So, uh, if you plot a graph of specific conductance versus volume of the base added, you will get uh, the points distributed like this and we should not draw any freehand curve any time for this type of experiment. Using this scale, we have to draw three straight lines and make sure that we cover maximum number of points in this process and we should get two points of intersections. One is here and the other one is here. And from the point of intersection, find out the volume of the base required first to neutralize the strong acid that is HCl and then the, the volume of sodium hydroxide required to neutralize both the acids. The difference between the second volume and the first volume will give you the amount of base required to neutralize the second weak acid that is the acetic acid and rest of the things are discussed in the calculation part. When it comes to performing, perform, performing the experiment, you need the following setup to perform this experiment. You need a conductivity meter with a conductivity cell which will have its own cell constant and you need a base that is the sodium hydroxide solution of certain strength, the burette and a beaker. 
The burette has been thoroughly washed, rinsed with 0.5 normal sodium hydroxide solution and filled. And we have to take a 50 ml pipette and pipette out the given acid mixture into a clean 100 ml beaker like this. We we'll add a magnetic pellet into it and place it on a stirrer. Switch on the stirrer and allow the solution to mix. Now take out the conductivity cell from the distilled water, wash it and just wipe it with a tissue and dip it in the solution for which we have to make the specific conductance measurements. Then note down the first reading. I have so far not added any sodium hydroxide solution into it. So this specific conductance is due to the mixture of weak and strong acid present in the mixture. Now from the bullet, we are supposed to add the sodium hydroxide in 0.5 ml portions each time, allow the solution to mix and note down the constant specific conductance read out on the instrument. The first reading we have already noted down and we now see that the specific conductance value is decreasing. This is because as and when I add sodium hydroxide, the HCl is neutralized and the high, highly mobile H plus ions are replaced by less mobile sodium and chloride ions and hence the conductivity decreases. Like this, we have to go on adding sodium hydroxide in 0.5 ml portion each time and go on recording the specific conductance of the solution like this. Upon every addition of sodium hydroxide, more and more number of H plus ions are replaced with the sodium ions and hence the conductivity continuously decreases. We should make a note here that the specific conductance depends on the number of ions present in the solution and as well as their mobility. Since here the number of H plus ions which have high mobility is getting reduced and being replaced with high um, concentration of sodium Na plus ions and which have less mobility, the conductivity is continuously decreasing. This continues till we reach the equivalence point that means till all the HCl in the solution has been neutralized completely. The acetic acid does not get neutralized because it is not dissociated because of the common ion effect and the H plus ions suppresses the dissociation of the weak acid that is the acetic acid in the mixture. Now we are 
started to see the specific conductance will get increased. This is because now at this point all hexane has been neutralized and the acetic acid undergoes dissociation and it is getting neutralized by the addition of sodium hydroxide. But the increase is only marginally because here the salt that is formed sodium acetate is once again getting dissociated and contributes to the increased specific conductance of your solution. But the conductivities are not comparable to that of H plus ions or the OH minus ions and hence we don't see any uh, steep increase in the specific conductance of the solution. Now we can see that the specific conductance is increasing in larger portions. Probably at this stage, all the acetic acid has been neutralized completely, and whatever sodium hydroxide I am adding is now in excess and is unused and furnishing a lot of OH minus ions into the solution, which has a certain specific conductance associated with it, and which is higher than the rest of all the ions in the solution, and hence the specific conductance is increasing steeply.
We have to continue the addition of sodium hydroxide into the acid mixture uh, till you reach the specific conductance value that we started with in the beginning. So we get sufficient number of points to plot the graph if we reach that specific conductance value once again so that we can minimize the error. This number of points are sufficient enough uh, to plot the graph and uh, do the calculations. So, we have to stop the serial, take out the conductivity cell from the acid mixture and place it in a beaker which contains the distilled water. That means, we have to uh, remove the cell. Now, uh, it's about the calculations. Here is um, the typical readings that are uh, represented here. and. This is how the graph looks like when you plot specific conductance versus volume of sodium hydroxide added for the during the experiment. And when it comes to the calculation, firstly we have to note down uh, two volumes that is volume 1, V1 which is the volume of sodium hydroxide required to neutralize the HCl first and V2 which is the volume required to neutralize both the acids and V2 minus V1 will give you the volume of sodium hydroxide required to neutralize the acetic acid. Uh, we all know about the equivalence equation that is N1 V1 equal to N2 V2. We have to use those equations and find out the amount of each acid present in it. Firstly, we know the volume of any OH required to neutralize the HCl first. So, if you multiply that volume uh, by the strength of um, sodium hydroxide and divide by the volume of the acid mixture, you will get the uh, normality of HCl. And further, on multiplication with the equivalent weight of HCl that is 36.5, you will get the amount of HCl present in 1 dm cube that is 1 mm of the solution. Then, to find out the amount of acetic acid present in the given mixture, firstly we should find out V2 minus V1 like this. Then use that volume in the calculation part, multiply it with the sodium hydroxide strength and divide by the volume of the acid mixture, you will get the strength of the acetic acid. Now if you multiply with the equivalent weight of acetic acid which is nothing but 60, then you will get the amount of acetic acid present in 1 liter. And you have to report the results in terms of the amount of acid present in uh, the given mixture volume 50 ml. So, we have here correspondingly divided by 20 in each case to get the amount of HCl or the acetic acid present in uh, 20 ml of the acid mixture. Thank you.